Hey, President Trump, he's coined this new phrase, which is used all of the time, that it'd be fake news. Fake news, is it brand new? Is it fake? Of course it's fake. Is it new? Of course it is not. 300 years ago in the United States of America, fake news was doing really good and strong things. People said, hey, she's a witch, she's a witch. They went out and they killed hundreds of women because they're witches. They killed them. That's the extent of fake news. Wow, or the power, I should say, of fake news is going on again today. Nobody has died yet, but I got to tell you, spirits are dying. A lot of things are kind of getting beat up and is not very nice. Fake news, what part of that don't you get? How about it's a lie? Pay attention. Just tell the truth. That's kind of neat. One bad thing about the truth, though, when you open your mouth with the fact, it's hardly out of your mouth. And gossip, fake news, is halfway around the world. We just got to deal with that somehow. Democrats, stupid people, I repeat myself, they want non-residents now and non-citizens to be able to vote in America. Really? You can't make this stuff up? So many cities are saying, hey, it doesn't matter who you are or where you live. Come on in and vote. If you come in by the busload, that's okay too. Oh, but by the way, I think the president screwed up here because he had Russia come in and vote and do stuff. Really? You just said two things. You want everybody in the free world, any part of the world doesn't have to be free to come and vote, but the Russians can't do it because the president maybe did it. And it's been proven beyond a doubt the president had nothing to do with it and the Russians didn't do anything bad. Oh boy, dumb is forever. <laughs> in the uh, Canadian system, it's almost as bad. The voters are walking around with headaches and, and blinders on, the ones that don't have a headache, and they're saying, what do we do next? Who do we vote for? In Canada, you don't vote for anyone anyway. You vote against someone all of the time. You need to have strong leaders on the right. We don't have that in Canada. We got goofy leaders on the left, maybe a little bit of that on the right. What are we going to do? The percentages are disgusting. You know, over 50% of people say, we just don't care. We can't vote because there's nobody to vote for. They got to clean that up. Golf courses, the prime mistake in Canada. What's that got to do with anything? It actually does because the prime mistake is saying, hey, let's not call men anymore. Men and don't call women, women, bathroom, blah, blah, blah. He's a gender freak, right? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of unbelievable. You missed something. I got something for you there, prime mistake. Golf courses and gender equality. If feminists really want gender equality, let's do away with the ladies' tees. Make them hit the ball from the men's tees. Oh, you shouldn't call them men's tees. I call them it tees. Uh, Prime Minister, uh, I, I messed up. Prime Minister, he's not. He would be the prime mistake. He's now asking people within his government, the uh, transport minister in particular, to find a solution following Greyhound's withdrawal of bus service from Western Canada. The solution is kind of obvious. You go out and you nationalize it. You buy it, it you know, and just call it CBC dog race or some stupid thing, right? That's what they're going to do. People don't use it. and <laughs> It doesn't pay. And, and it's been subsidized by Greyhound for a good number of years. And they finally said, hey, this doesn't make sense. It loses lots of money. So the government, of course, it does make sense. They should buy it. Duh. They just keep on being themselves. Leftism is, is a real serious mind disease. I used to think it could be safe, but it can't be. I, I, I mean, you want to someday put their brains in a jar and, and kind of look at them and try to figure it out. I mean, maybe it's just the left side of the mind. Do they have a right side? I don't think so. They keep on being themselves. People now throughout different cities in the United States and in Canada are talking about these guaranteed income stuff, right? I mean, really? I mean, how do you do that? I, I, I mean, you just can't. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, here's a, uh, the foreclosure capital of California. Uh, you know, I, I mean, they're, they're looking at uh, so many cities in that place are looking to have these guaranteed incomes. They're going to start giving checks to people. Uh, Fresno is going to give $500 a month. I think it's Fresno. You know what? It's actually not on this sheet. Now I'm going by memory, and sometimes that's not so good. Duh. Soon, I'll be hiding my own Easter eggs. It's an age thing, but I kind of think it's Fresno. They're writing checks for 500 bucks. You don't have to do anything, just show up. And if you don't show up, they'll probably deliver the check. Now, I've finished my rant for the day. I'm going to go stand outside, and you can tell everybody I'm outstanding. Hey, see ya.